Hello everybody and welcome to the first ever video on the Racing Through History YouTube channel. This is a channel dedicated to covering motorsport stories from past and present, both incredibly well known and a little more obscure. So if you're interested in finding out everything about motorsport stories from its past, then consider clicking that subscribe button. But for now, I, uh, I hope you enjoy the video we've lined up. My first ever video, so I hope you enjoy it and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Quick question. What is the most successful Formula One car of all time? You might naturally think it's the McLaren MP44, which won 15 out of the 16 races back in 1988. Or the Ferrari F2004, which brought Michael Schumacher his fifth straight world championship. Newer fans might say it's Mercedes' 2016 challenger, the W07 hybrid, but no, none of them in fact. The most successful Formula 1 car of all time is one you might have never even heard of. In fact, it's the only car in Formula 1 history with a 100% win rate. It's the subject of today's video, the 1978 Brabham BT46B. The Brabham BT46B, nicknamed the fan car, competed in the 1978 Formula 1 season. And in case you're wondering, no, it's not called the fan car because it's powered by the sheer force of Dutch Max Verstappen fans. The reason for the car's nickname was the design that led to its success. But before we talk about that design, we need to talk about the reason it happened in the first place. Lotus in the late 1970s. You see, in 1977, Colin Chapman, head of the uh, Lotus Formula 1 team, came up with a design that would change Formula 1 for years to come, and eventually also led to the death of Gilles Villeneuve. With the Lotus 78, he introduced the F1 world to the craziness that was ground effect. You see, the 78 was designed to have so-called Venturi tunnels inside the side pods. These tunnels caused air to move under the car at a quicker rate, which caused a low pressure area under the car. Flexible rubber skirts mounted to the side pods would then contain that area, causing a suction effect. The result? Massive downforce. The result of this was that the 78 and its successor, the 79, were absolutely dominant during races. Partly because nobody really seemed to understand what they were dealing with. And that's because the 78 was developed in complete and total secrecy, so nobody really knew what made the cars so fast. After a while, the other team started to slowly figure out what the Venturi Tunnel secret was and were trying to adapt it to their own cars. One of those teams was called Brabham. It was founded in 1960 by the legendary Australian driver Jack Brabham and was now owned by one Bernie Eccleston, who would later become Formula One owner. The task of bringing the BT46, as Brabham's 1978 car was called, into the ground effect era was given to a young South African designer by the name of Gordon Murray. But he had just a slight problem the car's engine. You see, unlike most teams at the time, Brabham's cars were powered by a 3-litre flat 12 engine provided by Alfa Romeo. It was more powerful than the more common Cosworth DFV engines and it also had a lot of torque. Unfortunately, the engine's flat layout made the use of Venturi tunnels next to impossible because the engine was so wide it took up the space needed for the airflow to make ground effect work. A new V12 was a possible solution, but this was going to cost far too much time and essentially render Brabham's 1978 season a complete failure. In other words, a different solution was needed and it was needed fast. While it was working on a new design, Murray recalled a car from 1970 called the Chaparral 2J. This car was nicknamed the Sucker Car because it used two fans from a military vehicle powered by a snowmobile engine to create a partial vacuum under the car. The underbody was then sealed off with Lexan skirts, which caused the car to essentially be sucked to the ground, creating a massive amount of downforce. 
Murray was very optimistic about this idea and set to work incorporating it into his new design. The result was a fan car. Here's how it works. As with any Formula 1 car, air is brought in at the front, but the difference here is that the air is accelerated under the car by the under tray at the front and then trapped under the car by the side skirts. Cool air is then also being sucked in by the radiator at the top and then all of the air is sucked out by the large fan on the back of the car, essentially creating that same vacuum as the 2J hat. The fan was connected to the engine. This meant the higher the engine revved, the faster the fan would spin, which means more downforce. This also provided an advantage over the Venturi tunnel design because that design required high speeds to create large amounts of downforce as the air would have to be moving under the car at a faster rate. But because the fan was coupled to the engine, that meant as long as the engine was on, the fan was on, which means it practically created downforce while it was idling. This allowed for greater cornering speeds at lower speeds. It was a genius bit of design for Murray, but there was just one problem with it. You see, FISA, Formula 1's governing body at the time, had banned the use of moving aerodynamic devices, which would render the BT46V completely banned from competition. Murray worked around this by claiming the design was meant to cool the engine. By mounting the radiator on top of the engine, he made it look as if the fan was meant to help guide cool air into the radiator and through the engine, because that setup was completely legal. And because the Alfa Romeo engine was prone to overheating, FISA stewards actually believed the fan was meant to cool the engine and allowed it on the car. With the green light, Brabham set to work modifying their current cars to fit Murray's new design. The cars were finished in time for the Swedish Grand Prix and were shipped to the Anstorp airport circuit. To make sure none of the other teams found out what Brabham had come up with, the team covered up the fans with a dustbin lid to stop the competition from spying around and taking looks at the cars. But as soon as Brabham drivers John Watson and Nicky Lauda hit the track, the BT46B True Colors became astonishingly clear because every time the driver stepped on the throttle, the fan would do what it was designed for and suck the car to the ground, creating huge downfalls and allowing for tremendous cornering speeds. Much to nobody's surprise, protests immediately followed. Lotus's Mario Andretti was the loudest voice, claiming the fan launched all sorts of things at his car and accusing the fan car of being downright dangerous. This accusation was proven to be untrue by FISA and the 46 passed the technical inspection with flying car and was cleared to race. Yet surprisingly, the next day, both Watson and Lauda were unable to take pole position as Mario Andretti set the fastest time in qualifying. But there was a good reason for this. You see, Bernie Ecclestone, Brabham's team boss, was also the president of the Formula 1 Constructors Association at the time. He knew that the way the fan car had been designed could potentially put his position as president in grave danger. So he ordered his drivers to hold back during qualifying to make the car seem less fast than it actually was. But as soon as race day rolled around, there was no more stopping the fan car. Nicky Loud unleashed the machine and dominated the race, winning it by a gigantic 34 seconds ahead of second place Riccardo Patrese. Gordon Murray's design had worked like an absolute dream, but after the race, all hell broke loose. Rival teams were absolutely livid that this car was even allowed to race in the first place. Lotus was once again the most vocal protester. Colin Chapman headed a group of folk teams threatening to withdraw their support for Eccleston as president if he did not ban the BT46B immediately. Ecclestone tried to talk his way out of this by proposing to drop the car after running three more races, which somehow the other folk teams just accepted. But before Eccleston and the angry horde could come to terms, FISA stepped in. Determining the BT46B to use the banned moving aerodynamic devices, the car was banned from racing ever again, and Brabham had to resort to their previous designs. 
And thus ends the story of the Brabham BT46B. It was one of the most ingenious designs Formula 1 had ever seen, yet it was never able to reach its full potential. But because the 1978 Swedish Grand Prix was the only race the fan car ever entered, that means it still holds a 100% win rate to this day. Which makes it, in a way, the most successful Formula 1 car of all time. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed making it quite a lot. If you want to see more videos like this from me in the future, do hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be covering plenty more stories from motorsports past just like this one. Uh, I do really hope you liked it. If you liked it, click that like button. And as a last thing, consider checking out my social media pages, Instagram, that's at Racing Through History, or check me out on Facebook, that's facebook.com slash Racing Through History. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and uh, I'll see you soon. Goodbye.